Communities. We have Dr. Lee Seward. So thank you for joining us. First of all, all of you who have chosen to join this live stream. I am, I've just been so excited about this. And I've had the honor of, of chatting with Dr. Lee Seward earlier this morning. And just for those of you that um, may not already know Dr. Lee Seward, um, let me just give you a little bit of a background. And forgive me if I get a little bit excited because I kind of get stargazed. I feel like I literally am in the midst of greatness here. And he is so humble. So just stop it and let me brag on you a minute, Dr. Lee. Uh, so, <laughs> so Dr. Lee Seward, um, he is a graduate of Colorado State University doctorate of veterinary medicine. Now, I've, I've had, I've raised my own pets and I've been around and I have through the years heard of this, this product called HeartGuard, called HeartGuard 30. And now there was a HeartGuard 30 plus. Well, who you're looking at right here is one of the, the um, co-inventor, the, the man, the doctor that led a team of people to develop this product that literally has changed the lives of many dogs because of, I don't even know what it's all about. I think it has to do with heartworms. That's what I know, but it's a very famous product that literally has saved the lives of now, I'm sure millions of pets around the globe. And, and who you're looking at is the, the doctor, the veterinarian, the doctor of veterinarian uh, medicine who actually created that. So I would say I'm in the presence of greatness. Dr. Lee and Rebecca, I know you're watching his wife, whether you believe it or not, because you're married to him, that's what I feel. So here now is Dr. Lee having this great invention, so or, or creation that he helped a team do, and I'm still giving the bio. Now, if you were to see the bio that I read, you guys, I would be spending this whole time reading his bio, 15 minutes. It would probably take me for his life's accomplishment. He is a he is a true patriot, and he is a um, a, an American veter veteran as well as a veterinarian. So he has accomplished a lot in his life, traveled the world, but also had a great accomplishment. But here he is, retired, gets to go on his own world and was introduced to something that we're going to talk about today. And I'm like, okay, you could be out just goofing off and playing and enjoying your life, but here you are, a part of a biotech company that has a, a literally life-changing product that now you are sharing with the world of animals, veteran, fellow um, doctors of veterinary medicine, people, your own pet, and building a global business. Tell us about it. How in the world could you go from where you were to where you are today and what's pulling you into your future? Welcome, share your story, and tell us about this amazing product that now you're sharing with your world. How did you learn about it? Just go well, for it. Well, thank you so much, Becky, and thank you so much for, for uh, having me join you in this uh, 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 little show today. <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, I could spend all the time just telling about you too. So uh, you are uh, an amazing person. Uh, obviously anybody that's watched you knows you're full of energy, but you're also full of love. You're full of love. It comes through very, very obviously for, for your people and, and your love of the Lord. Um, I just, uh, it's just such a, a, a pleasure and uh, I'm so blessed to be able to work with you in this little project. Um, so anyway, uh, I, uh, I did serve in, in uh, the United States Army. Uh, that's one of the opportunities that I've had in life. You know, a lot of people said, oh, you had an opportunity to be in the Army and serve in Vietnam. And I see it that way, yes. I, I served my country, and I'm so grateful for that and have absolutely no regrets. Um, after I got out of the service, uh, another opportunity fell to me right at the end of my service, and that was I met my wife, and, and I was able to convince her uh, to marry me, and that was 47 years ago. So after that, um, I went back to school because I had throughout my life um, wanted to become a veterinarian. I grew up on a farm, uh, had a lot of exposure to animals and, and animals uh, being raised, uh, plus our pets. Uh, so I, I really, it was something I'd always wanted to do, but when I got out of high school, quite frankly, I wasn't capable of achieving that. Uh, and that's another thing the Army gave me. 
So when I came back to school, uh, went through um, the program at Colorado State University, got my bachelor's degree in zoology, and then went on uh, to get my doctor of veterinary medicine um, degree and uh, went into private practice for a relatively brief period of time. And, and while I was in private practice, uh, our practice was doing some work with a pharmaceutical company on a, some new chemistry they were working on. And um, I thought it was extremely interesting. And I, I understood from that from our work with it, that this was going to be a pretty important product and a pretty important chemistry. So I got to talking to the company and used some of the contacts that I had and uh, applied for a job. And um, the good news is that I hit it off with the guy that was hiring and he hired me even though I really wasn't qualified because I didn't have a research degree. I had my clinical degree. Um, so the good news is I got hired the bad news is the job was in New Jersey. No, that's hard to no, actually <laughs> re-enjoy it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so anyway, I went to work for Merck Research Laboratories and uh, very quickly was put in charge of uh, the dog and horse projects with this new chemistry. And um, long story short, um, I did have the opportunity to work with the team and lead the team that developed the HeartGuard, the original HeartGuard product for dogs and also uh, products for horses and eventually a, a myriad of other products. Uh, all these products went to make a significant difference in the lives of, of animals, of the lives of people that love their animals and the lives of people that depend on animals uh, for products, uh, meat, fiber, uh, etc. So it was an amazing thing and talk about right place at right time. Um, I went on with my research career at, at Merck Research Labs and then joined another startup company, again, working uh, on new products and new technologies. Um, I worked there for a number of years. Uh, we created some new products there and then essentially um, started cutting back and retired uh, from veterinary medicine, essentially. Uh, still did some things with my own animals and that sort of thing, but really was, was retired. And... Um, what happened after a significant period of time of being in that retired kind of mode, running our farm, and enjoying our lives, et cetera, is we were on an airplane ride to, uh, to San Antonio, Texas, and uh, uh, to a wedding, a family wedding. And uh, this lady sat next to us on the plane um, and uh, Becky hit it off with her. I was, wasn't sitting next to her, I was next to the window. Becky, my wife, Becky, um, and her hit it off. Uh, and I got to listening to what they were talking about and heard about some new technology that would reduce oxidative stress in all animals, in humans and animals. And I said, wow, that's pretty interesting. I knew oxidative stress from my time uh, as uh, something that was, uh, was uh, uh, free radical damage. And, and so I said, wow, that's pretty dang interesting, free radical damage. Uh, and being controlled by um, a natural product that this woman was talking about that was a new, new product uh, and technology. So I said, wow, that's pretty dang interesting. Um, when we finished our wedding, got home, I started uh, reading about it and very quickly realized that, um, depending on how you wanna look at it, but I look at it that the good Lord had thrown another opportunity to us in our lives to really change the world, to make a significant contribution uh, to the health and well-being, uh, and even financial health of people uh, and their and their animals, their pets, um, and and other animals. So I said, "Wow!" I said, "Becky, we've got to we've got to get involved." So basically, we came out of retirement. Uh, <laughs> we came out of retirement to to do this. And um, here we are a few years later with absolutely no regrets because this is truly one of the most amazing technologies that I have ever seen. And I can tell you, not only is it amazing in, in, in people, but I think it's even more so in animals. Well, with that, let me share a couple of screens that you um, had shared with me and talked to me about let's, since, we're, since we can do this on here. 
So first of all, talk to us a little bit now because I want you to go into the doctor mode here um, and a doctor of veterinary medicine. We have Hap here and Hap happens to be a baby of yours. <laughs> yes, he is. Talk to us a yes, little bit. Now you've, you've, you've come out of retirement. You, you're like, this is up six years ago. Now that you were introduced to this, your mind is a little bit blown on what has just landed into your information. Now tell us what you have been, have found out about this and what makes you so excited about sharing it with others. Sure. Well, I mean, what I found out about, uh, being reading about it at the time and, and to continue to uh, learn about it is that what this technology, what these products do is they activate a protein called NRF2. Basically, what NRF2 is, is it's a, it's a key. It's a key inside of your body. It's a key inside your cells that turns on your genes. That is good genes. In fact, they're called the survival genes. And by so doing, um, it creates a number of different enzymes and other things, uh, proteins in your cells that in fact take care of oxidative stress. That in fact, uh, uh, reduce inflammation and reduce fibrosis. Uh, this is something that is just a, an amazing breakthrough, one that uh, influences practically every disease you can think of, but also is a major factor in the aging process and, and uh, the things related to aging. Um, and in speaking of animals, is that it is exactly the same system in animals as it is in humans. And our animals, we love our animals. Uh, uh, we've had animals our whole lives. Uh, Becky and I both, she's a big horse person, always has horses. Currently still have a couple of horses. We're down from, I think, 18 uh, down to two now. Um, uh, our current uh, dog is Hap. But I just wanted to point out to people that animals um, like Hap um, are frequently athletes. Hap, as you saw in that picture, had uh, uh, had some awards he got from uh, running in the we uh, in the re uh, running of the wieners. Uh, but even though he doesn't look like an athlete, he runs and gets around. And so all of that activity is one of the things that generates oxidative stress. But not only that, uh, the stress of athletes, whether it be horses and, and people use horses, same issue. Horses are athletes. Uh, even the old uh, horses that aren't doing much are athletes. Um, so they are exposed to creating new free radicals. They're exposed to oxidative stress, but even more so they're exposed to regular stress that generates all kinds of conditions. Uh, as you can see in this particular slide, where, where elite athletes have a higher prevalence of things like uh, gastric ulcers and hemorrhaging and, and oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not only that with our animals, we got to think of other things that animals are exposed to. Um, the animals are outside, the animals are, are getting around, the animals uh, are on our lawns, and on our sidewalks, and all the chemicals uh, that are, are put down for various purposes, everything from, from uh, clearing ice on the roadways and the sidewalks to controlling weeds in the lawns, fertilizing the lawns, etc. All those things have a level of toxicity and the dogs particularly through their pads can absorb these things. Uh, they aren't wearing any protective clothing. Yes, they have a, a hair coat to varying degrees, uh, but frequently uh, things get through that hair coat. Mm -hmm. They're exposed to solar radiation, uh, magnetic radiation from, from power lines. They're exposed to exhaust from vehicles far more than we are. Mm -hmm. They're down to the level where they're getting it right directly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they're exposed to uh, things in their water uh, frequently, um, they may drink from sources that we can't control, uh, and oftentimes we don't uh, provide them with, with that clean of water, um, and, and so they're exposed to things uh, that way. Uh, dog foods, and, and, and even with horses, it's the same issue. Horse uh, water uh, frequently are exposed to water that may have a number of toxins in it. All these issues, all these issues exacerbate this thing we're calling oxidative stress. It's become one of the most important subjects uh, in, in medicine, um, it, it, not just in human medicine, but in veterinary medicine. As you can see here, I did a quick search uh, about on oxidative stress and how important it is. 
And uh, this is in Google Scholar, which is a search engine looking at technical and medical literature. And oxidative and stress in animals is so important and widely researched. There are close to 3 million papers and articles from scientists and veterinarians about oxidative stress. That's how key it is. That just blows my mind. You know, and the fact that, and the, and, and the fact that these, these things that are inducing 29, 2.9 million, that you have found something. It's no, it's no wonder as a researcher, as a doctor of veterinary, no wonder your mind is blown to go, and we have an all natural product that reduces oxidative stress in all mammals. Sign me up. I mean, I could see you it's knowing these certain exactly. illnesses, how this well, would I'm sure that's the way you that's the way you felt, and that's certainly the way I felt. And uh, uh, the fact that it's all natural, and the fact that it is proven in massive amounts of literature not not just the, the the fact that how important it is, but it's also been well researched by universities all over the world and major universities uh, in the United States, including my own Colorado State University, University of Colorado, uh, the Ohio State University, Louisiana State University, uh, uh, the Mayo Clinic. I mean, they're just on and on and on. And these uh, universities, uh, by and large, are doing this on their own nickel. Company isn't asking them to do this. They are so excited about the fact that there is this uh, uh, combination of five herbs that will reduce oxidative stress proven in clinical studies to reduce oxidative stress um, has just got everybody so so excited uh, to the point that uh, uh, researchers at Washington State University uh, published a letter, uh, a paper, um, a scientific paper where they reviewed all of the scientific work that had been going on on NRF2 activation and came to the conclusion that NRF2 may well become the most extraordinary therapeutic and most extraordinary preventive breakthrough in the history of medicine. I mean, that is a profound and far reaching statement. Uh, uh, that is, is so amazing to think about, uh, not today, not over the next couple of weeks, but in the history of medicine. I took note of this that they didn't say in the history of human medicine, they said in the history of medicine. And maybe it was not to their intent to say veterinary medicine, but the fact is in this paper, the vast majority of work that they refer to uh, about NRF2 activation and the benefits against disease and aging process were in animals. So. This is, uh, this is just so exciting, I can't hardly contain myself <laughs> because uh, uh, it is truly, um, I agree with this statement that this is certainly the most extraordinary breakthrough I've seen in my lifetime uh, and my overview of what's going on in, in veterinary medicine.